once again, I have a pleasure to address you since all other authors are too busy. But as you can see, once again, uh, I'm presenting this paper on behalf of the University of Belgrade. Uh, you can see from this long title that we will discuss pressure equipment, risk analysis, fraction mechanics, and human and organizational partners. So, uh, briefly, I really didn't do this. So, thank you. Uh, briefly speaking, uh, what uh, some of us, or maybe even most of us know about this topic is how to apply a failure analysis diagram to assess uh, points and then to estimate if uh, there is a risk or uh, no risk. Uh, in other words, uh, what are the safe and unsafe uh, regions for a certain component with the product? In addition to that, in this presentation and in this uh, research, we also applied, I have to say as a joke, uh, human and organizational factors, which are based on uh, good old Einstein's uh, statement that uh, space and human stupidity are not limited in his opinion, but he's not quite sure for the first one. So uh, as for the human and organizational uh, risk-based analysis, uh, this is the starting point. We all know that uh, sometimes uh, people really make stupid mistakes and sometimes uh, that is uh, with the big consequences. So this is why we made this research. Actually, this is a crucial part of doctoral thesis of the first author. And since she used to be at the Department of Industrial Engineering, it was quite appropriate to make uh, some something like this. So uh, I go back now for a very brief uh, explanation of the traditional fracture mechanics approach. In this case, we start with linear elasticity and we uh, take into account the fact that if uh, stress intensity factor is less than fracture toughness, then structure integrity is not threatened and vice versa. If it is higher than Structure toughness, then structure integrity is jeopardized. Not necessarily that failure will follow, but we have to be quite uh, in uh, consideration of it. Now, except for the linear elastic structure mechanics, which is, of course, uh, over conservative uh, for practically all welded structures, because plates that we use to weld and made some component like pressure vessel, they are ductile more or less. So to take into account uh, this, we are actually using this failure analysis diagram, in this case, level one, with the most important feature that based on certain equation, which is derived on uh, principles of uh, strip uh, model by Dugdale a long time ago. So based on that equation, five actually separates two regions in this diagram into a safe one, which is below the curve and unsafe, which is above the curve, either more to the brittle fracture, which is on the left or collapse, plastic collapse, which is on the right. Uh, to Assess risk, which is the next step. Uh, we should uh, remind ourselves that risk is actually product of uh, probability and consequence. On this slide, you can see details about how to judge the consequence, but uh, these details are not of importance for us today because uh, pressure vessels that we are considering are certainly with uh, catastrophic consequences if they fail. So we are certainly in uh, a very high risk if we consider just consequences. So let us consider probabilities or, or as we say, and use a term in this uh, presentation, likelihood. 
because probability is exactly a mathematical term and they have some reserve. We have some reserve to use that term. So we have a couple of pressure vessels with unacceptable defects detected long time ago, but after uh, about two decades with the inspection in 2019, we started to consider this risk-based approach. Previously, we just used structure mechanics principle. So there were about uh, three vessels with uh, really relatively large cracks. You can see how they were uh, detected by the ultrasound and you can see the vessel itself. It is a high pressure and a relatively high loaded vessel, all of them actually. So some basic uh, data about these defects, for example, uh, three of them are pointed out here. For example, this one is 170 millimeters long and uh, it's, uh, it's other dimension in depth, which we call width. In this case, it's 14 millimeters, but for how to say fortunately, it is in the center of a circular seam. So uh, it, no, sorry, this one is edge. Unfortunately, this one is an edge crack because unfortunately I'm using as a term to describe that the stress intensity factor is much larger than if it were in the center as the other two are. Anyhow, we don't have time to go into uh, such details. So I will briefly just show you ultrasonic uh, testing results and I will show you also uh, the other one. And uh, there are some calculations which are basic fracture mechanics, which enables us to come to the coordinates, to get the coordinates of the point. So in the case of, uh, I yes, you can see, uh, in the case of one of them, these coordinates are 0 0.23. This is the first line up uh, for X, that is uh, for, for plastic collapse. 23 is actually likelihood of plastic collapse and 65 is uh, 0 0.65 is likelihood for the brittle fracture. Uh, for the other two, I will also show briefly. You can see now the position of that point in the failure assessment diagram and the position of the second one. Unfortunately, the third one is not presented, but I tell you that it is 0 0.49 uh, for X and about 0 0.7 for Y, so somewhere here. So these two actually, the one that you cannot see and one that you can see are uh, far more dangerous than that one. But in any case, all three of them are in the safe uh, region. So uh, that is for the classical fracture mechanics. Analysis, uh, this is uh, data for the third one. We should now skip it and go for this additional analysis. Well, first, just to say that risk matrix <laughs> for these three defects are as follows. Uh, I told you consequence category is very high. So defect uh, 1.1 is uh, still in this yellow, which means medium risk region, but these two are in red, and especially they will become even more red once we add the risk from the human and organizational factor. Now, I will really go briefly to this. Uh, I will uh, show you two sets of equations which will should be solved. There are some unknown quantities there, uh, and input unknown quantities are actually likelihoods for human factor and organizational factor and input values are those obtained from the questionnaires that were uh, done, fulfilled, uh, replied by uh, people employed at uh, the same company, of course, where these pressure vessels are, and that is reversible hydropower plant by Nabash. So the results of the uh, uh, solution of this uh, awkward but still linear, linear system of equations, so not a big deal, one and the other. The result is 
0 0.39 for human factor and 0 0.26 for organizational factor. And if we combine them, it is 0 0.55. So furthermore, if we combine this probability or likelihood with the points that we obtained previously, we get uh, results as shown here. Uh, but uh, not all, all five points were analyzed uh, in this paper. So just focus attention on, on uh, uh, this one and that one, and uh, they are uh, total uh, likelihood was close to one. Now, uh, I'm missing conclusions here, what's wrong? Okay, I will tell you conclusions. Sorry for that. It seems that I transferred the wrong version. So uh, conclusion is more on industrial engineering, more on the fact that our task as engineers is to quantify the risk, but we are not deciding about the destiny of uh, equipment. That is on the management. Of course, they can ask us. And if I were asked, I would uh, say uh, that uh, since everything we did is extremely uh, conservative, you can still use it, but carefully monitor every month if the, these defects are growing. And that's actually what we did. And those defects are still there. Then we finally replace his pressure vessel by new ones. But it was it is twenty five years that we had situation with, with this. So this is a great success actually of uh, this approach and structural integrity as a discipline. And this is why this presentation is dedicated to Professor Stan Sedmak. He was the father of the fraction mechanics in Southeast Europe, coincidentally also my own father and coincidentally grandfather of the first daughter. Thank you.